I'm feeling so tired this morning. I think I stayed up too late reading my book. What's new? Let's have some coffee though. <laughs> I don't remember the last time I curled my hair. It's been a hot minute. Right now, like I just curled it. It's giving ringlets. Got my wide tooth comb and I feel like this is where the magic happens. I need to curl my hair more often because it just gives it so much volume and I feel like after it has sat for like a couple of hours, that's when it's like at its prime. How fun. I know you guys are dying to know, what are we going to get up to today, Rachel? And honestly, we have a pretty fun day. It's like 8am, but today is a bit of an errands day, but like in a fun way, like fun errands. Like I have to run to the shops to grab a few things and I think I need to go to the post office to pick up a package. And I think I want to go read in the park. That's not an errand, but I did that a couple of days ago during my 24 hour readathon and it was honestly just so nice. I feel like the weather is so perfect here as we head into winter because the middle of the day the sun is out there's not a cloud in the sky and I feel like sitting in the sun reading my book just like literally warms me from the I was gonna say inside out but I guess it's more of the outside in. Either way it's my new favorite thing so I'd love to do that today. So there's our itinerary for the day. Reading, errands, we'll see what else we get up to. Honestly a fantastic day I must say. Guys look at my lilies. They're all opened up. I love lilies so much but I don't think I've ever had yellow ones. And you can't tell me these aren't like the happiest little bunch of flowers you've ever seen. $12 grocery store flowers are my love language. I was just about to open a package and I was like, wait, I should open it with you guys. But this is my first ever package from Missouri. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm fangirling a little bit because working with Missouri has been a dream of mine. It was on my vision board, I think in 2021 or 2022. So when they reached out, I was like, this is actually a dream come true. So it is a pleasure to say. Thank you so much to Missouri for sponsoring this next little bit of the vlog. I am so excited for this, but I thought we could open it up together. We have two little boxes here. We have a little dust bag, which is also perfect for traveling. So this is called the figuring. And obviously, as you guys can see, it comes in a sterling silver and also recycled 18 karat gold vermeil, which is not the same as gold plating. It's actually much thicker than gold plating. So it's gonna add even more durability to your pieces, which of course is perfect if you want these pieces to last, which who doesn't want their jewelry to last? This is what they look like together. Obviously you don't have to wear them together. You can just get your preferred metal but I also think they're kind of a fun mixed metal moment it's giving sleek it's giving modern it's giving futuristic and then in this little bag here we have a pair of hoops this is also part of the same collection these are called the figure oversized hoops I want to show you the shape of these because how cool is that again it's giving futuristic it's giving sleek I feel like the way I would personally style these earrings is with curled hair like I have today because it's just got that dimension to it and then I'm thinking like a nice dinner date night or a night out with the girls full black outfit just to go with that really sleek modern vibe. I feel like these are going to become my go-to going out earrings. They're simple but they're still very unique which I just love. But I also got a couple of other pieces that I want to show you. First up we have these earrings which are so beautiful. They're little hoops but they obviously have this texture to them. I also feel like they are the perfect size to wear every single day. And then I got two new rings and I absolutely love stacking rings and wearing a bunch of them. This top one is my absolute new favorite. I'm so excited to wear this. It is a signet ring with a little B on it. I think I want to wear it on my pinky as a little pinky signet ring maybe. And then I just got this really simple stacking ring that has a bit of texture to it. But like, are you kidding? Hopefully some of you have already guessed why I chose the B signet ring. Anyone get the reference? Now it feels like I have Magnolia and BJ with me at all times. Anyway, those are all the pieces that I have to share with you guys. A huge thank you to Missouri for sponsoring this little part of the vlog. Once again, I am literally so excited to be working with them. And of course, everything will be linked down below. But now that I feel properly ready for the day, let's actually get some stuff done. It's now now, almost midday. I don't know where the morning has gone. I had to do some computer work, but I'm finally ready to leave the house. I decided to change my jumper because I wanted to match this shirt. So I'm bringing my pink jumper because I thought it would kind of look cute. Styled across my shoulders. OOTD. Anyway, I've packed my bag. I've got my two current reads. Right now I'm doing my reread of A Court of Frost and Starlight. And I started Powerless last night and I have a feeling if it continues the way it's going, this is gonna be my favorite out of the Chestnut Spring series because it is so good so far and I really like Jasper. 
he's definitely my favorite boy so far but i don't want to claim it too early because i'm only like 60 pages in so i think my plan is to go to the post office pick up a package get myself some lunch and then go have myself a little lunch picnic <laughs> I found myself a spot at the park. I feel like I found my perfect reading park because no one is ever here. To be fair, it's a big park and this is like one corner of it and no one is ever here, which is stunning for me. Got my coffee, got my book. Life couldn't be better. to finish reading in the park for now. I have some other things that I want to do, including going to the shops, and I would love to do that before they get super busy. So we're gonna head off now, but it was such a stunning time. I love that I can just go for like an hour during my lunch break, I guess. Truly stunning. It's honestly becoming my new favorite thing. So next up on the list, I want to go to Daiso or Daiso. I'm not really sure what the pronunciation is. And potentially Office Works if we don't find everything we need. So you guys can come along with me. Also, we're looking for like bookish annotation related things. So I thought you guys would be interested in coming along. Happened, but I ended up in a bookstore fell into it I literally wasn't even planning to go in and I just walked in and then I was like fine I'll buy a book you know oh no my god my key just fell down the side of my seat got it basically I've decided that I'm gonna go on a book buying ban in June because I just want to make my way through my physical TBR a little bit more also utilize my library and stuff like that because I feel like in April and May I've just bought a lot of books which I'm not mad at but People are laughing at me. I'm filming myself. Anyway, but I just thought maybe we can have a month off and hopefully that will encourage me to read the books that I own a little bit more. But I was like, okay, we can buy one more book before we go on our book buying ban because there's a specific book that I've been wanting to get for a while. So I was like, okay, need to get this before June. And that is Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. My first ever Brando Sando. I'm really excited. I asked on Instagram if I were to start reading Brandon Sanderson, where would you suggest I start? And everyone either said Warbreaker or the Mistborn trilogy. But I was kind of like, I'd rather start off with a standalone than a series especially if I only let myself buy one more book before my book buying ban I don't want to buy the first book in a series and then not be able to buy the rest so I decided to go for Warbreaker and one I read the back and this sounds so interesting and two they didn't even have the first book in the Mistborn trilogy anyway so it was kind of just like a choice made for me as well we also had success at Daiso Daiso I still don't really know how to say it got the tabs I wanted and I might show you what I'm planning to do with those little annotation supplies I'm gonna put my camera away before more people keep laughing at me to give you guys some context about what I'm about to show you, one of my besties, Soph, has recently just been in her reading era. She's always been a reader, but recently she has just been really reading. And obviously I love that because I love reading and we've been reading a lot of the same books. She's been reading a lot of my favorite books so we can discuss them and it's just so much fun. And recently she's been saying that she wants to start annotating books. And when she said that, I was like, oh, interesting. It's her birthday next month, but she's gonna be in Europe during her birthday. And technically I've already given her her birthday present because George and I did like a combined thing but I decided to get her like a little a little something else just like something small so I have basically made her an annotation starter pack and I wanted to show you guys what I included because I get a lot of questions about where my annotation supplies are from and what I use to do my annotations and obviously I got her all of my favorite things so I thought I'd show you where they're from and what I got her in case you guys wanted to know any of these things. Obviously, I wanted to get her a little pencil case to put everything in. And I decided to get this one because I have this in pink and George has this in green. And every time Soph sees George or I using our one, she's like, oh, that's so cute. I need to get one. And I found this one on Amazon. They have a bunch of different colors, but I thought the blue seemed very her. So I got that from Amazon. And then, of course, I had to get her some annotation tabs. And so I got her a huge pack from Amazon with like every color you could ever want. I think this is the exact pack that I bought myself when I first started annotating. If you just look up like sticky tabs on Amazon, there are so many that come up and I've pretty much gone through all of mine now. So I just got her a big pack so she has a lot to choose from. Here's the thing. I thought it'd be fun to put everything in the little pencil case and give it to her 
like that, but it doesn't fit currently because it's in the packaging. But once the things are out of the packaging, they'll fit, but obviously I don't want to open them for her. So I'm just going to give them to her in the packaging and she can put them in the pencil case later. And the last thing I got from Amazon were the Zebra Mild Liners in like the pastel colors. You can get heaps of different color packs, so you don't have to get the pastel ones, but these ones are my favorite. I use the green and the blue all the time. And I actually bought myself a new pack of these as well, because a few of mine have just been like completely used up because I use them so much. I just feel like these are the perfect highlighters to use in books because they don't bleed through the pages. So got her a pack of those. And then from Big W, I just got a couple of pens. So first up, I just got a normal fine liner just in black because this is what I use all the time to do any sort of like writing on the page if I just want to write notes or any of my thoughts or underline any quotes or anything like that. So I just got her a black fine liner. And then I also got her a pack of these pastel ones because I thought it would be fun to have some different colors. And also if she wants to draw little hearts on a page or underline with a color or anything like that, I just thought these were cute. And they also kind of match the color scheme of the highlighters. So I thought they went well together. And then today when I was at Dazo, Dazo, whatever it is, I just got two more little packs of tabs. So the first one that I got her were these little skinny ones, which I just thought would be so fun. I've never used little skinny ones like this, but the colors were just beautiful. And I thought she might like them. So those those ones and then lastly I got these little sticky notes because I wanted to get her some sticky notes that she could actually write notes on if she didn't want to write on the page but wanted to write something in the book she could just stick them on here and they also have I don't know if you guys can see see how they have a little tab at the top so if she wanted to stick the tab out of her book and write a note on there she can do that and they're not too big either so those are all of the things that I got her for her little annotation supplies pack. I'm so excited to give it to her. I don't know when I'm going to see her next, but hopefully I can give it to her ASAP now that I've got everything. And hopefully she enjoys starting her annotation journey. Have fun. She's really scared of me. That's me with Jessa. I'm like, I think she might be sick of me a little bit. Good morning, guys. I am just sitting on the couch with my coffee. And of course, I'm watching Bookmarked. If for some reason you don't know, which I feel like most of you do, but if you're watching my videos, two of my favorite booktubers came out with a podcast. And it's just honestly the best thing ever i feel like if you love reading you need to listen or watch this podcast they have like a youtube channel where they post like the video version of it and then i think it's also on like all of the podcast platforms as well but as someone who obviously reads but also makes book content it is just the most relatable thing i've ever watched in my life because the way they talk about like things that stress them out about making book content or like things that they find hard is just like exactly how i feel and hearing someone else say something that you feel so deeply you're just like wow i feel so validated so <laughs> you guys need to get on this because it feels like I'm just hanging out with friends even though I'm literally across the world from them it feels like we're just hanging out which I love <laughs> I just remembered that we never opened the packages that I picked up from the post office yesterday. So we have this one and we have this one. This one is from my Wildflower family. Wildflower is a small Australian business. And one part of the business is a cafe in Newcastle, which I wish I lived closer because it would literally be my local. And the other part of the business is selling apparel and coffee accessories and just normal accessories, hats, water bottles, honestly, so many things. I almost always have their link down below and a discount code as well, if you guys wanna check it out. But but they just released some new jumpers this winter and they were like, can we send you one? And I was like, you absolutely can. I live in their t-shirts. I use their keep cup a lot. Like I feel like I'm always using wildflower stuff every single day. So they said two. They came out with two colors. I didn't think they'd send both. It's also so funny because last night Liam saw the package sitting on the table and he was like, oh, who's that from? And I was like, oh, it's from wildflower. And he was like, oh really? And he got so excited and I'm like, Broski, you already steal all of my wildflower shirts. To be honest, we share them. I let him wear them and he looks so good in them. So it's kind of fun because I just get my wildflower stuff in a size medium, which is oversized for me. And then he can wear it too. And he loves wearing wildflower as well. So I'm assuming he's probably gonna claim one of these as his own, especially since I have two. Oh my gosh, that's stunning. This is the first one. The quality of wildflower is truly unmatched. Jack and Ree, if you're watching this, stunning job. I wish you guys could feel this. I don't know if you'll be able to see the texture of it. Embroidered. And then I don't even know what you'd call this material in here, but it's like fluffy. Can't wait for Liam to steal this literally the second he gets home. And then this is the other color it comes in. How beautiful. Pretty much the same thing, but obviously just a different colorway. Again, look at that detail. Look at that quality. I'm so happy. I can't wait to put these on. I'm probably going to put one on this afternoon. I'm going to go hang out with Soph the Savo, so I'll probably wear one of these. Oh, and it even has so nice. It has a detail on the sleeve as well. Embroidered. Beautiful. 
beautiful. And then we have this package from Beginning Boutique. And this was also gifted, so thank you, Beginning Boutique. So first up, I saw this and I was like, I kind of just need it. You guys know how I feel about pink. How stinking cute. It's a little baby doll strapless dress. I'm not gonna lie, it does look like it's gonna be quite short. I feel like a few of my dresses from Beginning Boutique are a little bit short, so keep that in mind. I am a short girl, so it doesn't seem to matter too much on me. Like, I feel like it's not as short on me as it would be if you're taller, but it also has long sleeves off the shoulder puffy sleeves. I thought this would be really fun with a pair of like white boots or something. And it's like a linen material. Then I chose a little matching set. So this is the top. It's just like a white sweater, which I'm probably gonna wear not only with the set, but just like by itself as well, because who doesn't love a white sweater? It goes with everything. But then it has these little matching shorts. How cute, little knit shorts. I love knitted shorts because they're so comfy. And then lastly, probably my favorite piece, or at least I think it'll be my favorite piece based on the pictures online. This is so so beautiful. The shape of this is stunning. I'm very intrigued to try it on. It does look like it could be a bit see-through. <laughs> it's not double lined. So I'll have to try it on and see. I'm sure it'll be fine with like nude underwear and stuff. But it is this beautiful white maxi dress with some gorgeous little ruffle details. And that is the pattern on it as well. If you can see little yellow flowers, how stunning. The back is like completely open. It's got adjustable straps and like a tie up back as well. Hopefully this fits okay and hopefully it's not too see-through. I'm not gonna lie though. I am a bit sad that it's not double lined only cause like it's a white dress. So, okay, the top half is double lined, just not the bottom half. There's my little unboxing of the day. I thought it might be fun to end off this vlog with a little reading update because last night I finished a book. It's one of the only Kindle books I've read this month. I have not been using my Kindle a lot recently. I've just been loving physical books, but I finished Irresistible by Melanie Harlow, which I think is the first book in the... Is it called? Yeah, Cloverleaf Farm series. And I rated it two and a half stars. <laughs> I really like the premise of this series. It's basically a series of interconnected standalones. They're all, I think, forgive me if I get any of the details wrong, but I'm pretty sure it is a series of small town romances and each book is centered around one of the sisters in this specific family. And I think the first book was actually centered around the youngest, I think she's the youngest sister. Her name's Franny and she has kind of been coddled by her parents her whole life. She had some health issues when she was younger and I think her parents are just very protective over her and kind of see her as a baby of the family like they don't want her to grow up and so it's almost like they don't want her to have her own independence really which is obviously not the best but there was some character development with that but when the book starts Franny is working for her parents at their little family inn and I think she mostly just helps with the reception but also does a few other things but she loves to bake and her dream is to kind of like open her own shop and have her own business and I don't know if I mentioned she's 27 and then our male main character is a guy called Mac and he I actually can't remember how old he is he must be in his like late 30s I'm guessing and he is a single dad to three beautiful little girls and the three girls were super sweet but yeah it's obviously a romance between those two main characters and to be honest that description ticks so many of my boxes I love small town I love interconnected standalones it's also just over 300 pages and I love cute little quick Kindle Unlimited romances like that where they're just easy and just like fun the premise of it reminds me a lot of like the Edens or the Calamity Montana series by Devney Perry and so I kind of expected it to be the same vibe and I don't know but it just like wasn't I didn't click with the writing I couldn't care less about either of our main characters it felt like so insta lovey our female main character Franny is supposed to have like always had a crush on Mac I don't know it just felt like it came out of nowhere and she was just like I can't be with him because he's so much older and he also the male main character works for Franny's dad which is obviously not ideal. The whole situation gave me an ick because he is quite a lot older and here's my issue with age gap romances. Like it's really hard to do it well. I don't, <laughs> in my opinion, it's just not my favorite thing because so much of the time it just is a bit uncomfortable. And I also wanna make it clear that I'm not like shaming anyone for liking any sort of tropes because obviously some people like tropes, some people don't. Like some people love enemies to lovers, some people don't love enemies to lovers. And with age gap, I think there's very few that I enjoy and there's nothing wrong with that and there's nothing wrong if you enjoy them as long as it's like consenting and actually legal you know what I mean but one of my issues that I consistently seem to have with age gap is that a lot of the time they just love to mention it over and over and over and I don't I don't like that especially when it's like oh she looks so young and she's just so little and she's just so like they just mention how young they look or how youthful they are or how immature they are and I'm like you're making me uncomfortable because I'm trying to like kind of 
look over this whole age gap thing. And you're making it really hard when you keep mentioning how young she looks. And also it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird when people are like, she just looks so young. Like, why are you attracted to people that look so young? Like it's giving me a huge ick. I do not like it when they consistently mention it. So like that was one of the issues I had with this book. But overall, I just like could not care less about these characters. Like I did not care what happened to them. I did not care what the storyline was. Pretty much their whole love story for the most part was like kind of being kept a secret because obviously he worked for her dad and she was too young and her parents wouldn't approve and his friends wouldn't approve and like he had kids and they had to keep it from the kids and, and she was also like the babysitter and it was just like there were so many uncomfortable situations and I just I didn't like it I didn't like it the only things I really liked was the kids were really cute and sweet and it had like a nice ending like I didn't like hate it necessarily but I didn't like more than I liked if that makes any sense. Like there were very few parts of this book where I was actually enjoying what I was reading. And I honestly think the only reason I finished it was because it was kind of just like the only book that I had in my Kindle at the time. And often before bed, I want to read a Kindle because I can like lie on my side. And it's just like convenient. So I don't think I'll be continuing that series. I just don't, I just don't know if Melanie Harlow is an author for me. And I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that because not every author is going to be for everyone. And obviously I wish I enjoyed it. So if you enjoyed it, good for you. And I like wish I could say the same and I have have nothing against you it's just that we all have different reading tastes like it's just not that deep you know but I did just want to talk about it because I feel like it's not often that I like don't really enjoy a book so I do want to point it out when I don't because otherwise I feel like people are just like oh you just like every book you read and I'm like I promise I don't I just probably don't talk about them as much because I'd much rather be talking about books that I enjoy and I loved which speaking of I am still currently reading powerless I think I'm over halfway now but I literally messaged Sarah yesterday and I was like Sarah I'm in love with Jasper because this man, I am so shocked at how much I'm loving this book. It is actually phenomenal. And sometimes I get like this when I really, really, really enjoy a book where I don't want to pick it up because I don't want it to be over. So I almost like put off reading it because I'm like, I don't want to be done with it. And that's how I'm feeling about this book. Like I'm purposely reading it slowly so that it doesn't end. I just, Jasper... I'm just shocked at how much I'm enjoying this because obviously this is the third book in the Chestnut Spring series and the first two, well honestly the first one, I was like this is such a fun vibe. I've never read a cowboy romance before and it's just like I can't explain the vibe of those books but they're just, I don't know, being on the ranch, being with the cowboys, I just have such a good mental image of it and like I can see it so clearly and it's just so fun. I love the vibes. The romance in the first one I thought was like good but like overall I rated that book four stars because the vibe was so good. Like the romance was good but it was just like nothing crazy or like it's not really one that I'll probably keep in mind for a long time and then the second one again I loved the vibe of being on the ranch but the romance was honestly just like not very good to me so I rated that one three and a half stars because I was like it wasn't as good as the first one but the vibe being on the ranch doing all the ranchy types of activities was just so fun to me and I also love 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 like the found family aspect of it I don't know if it's considered found family if they're actually family but it just has the found family vibes you know but obviously I picked up the third one being like oh like I'm sure I'll have fun with it but I don't think it'll be anything revolutionary and tell me why this is like it's definitely giving me that five star feel which obviously I haven't finished it yet so I don't want to like I might change my mind I might end up rating this four stars or four and a half or something like that but right now if I were to finish the book right now I would rate it five stars because it's just so freaking good but to be honest I'm just a little shocked because it feels like I'm reading from a totally different author than I read from in the first two books because the depth that these characters and this relationship has is just so so different from the first two books like the first two books like I said it was fun and it was a good time but this one is like breaking my heart and all also just like it has me swooning like the actual relationship itself I'm just like wow and this man Jasper 100% a new book boyfriend for me he definitely does like fit in with all of the other boys that I tend to be in love with in books my friends love to joke that I have a type with book boyfriends because I always love the ones that are like quiet and broody but really really sweet kind of like behind the scenes like, like you don't really get to see their sweet side unless you're the female main character, I guess. But I am just loving this. I love that we're slowly finding out more about both of the characters' backstories and kind of like why they are the way they are. And it's also like childhood friends to lovers. Like Sloane has had a crush on Jasper since she was like 11 years old. And I just, we love childhood friends to lovers. We do. Anyway, I have been talking for far too long and I literally just came on here to end the vlog. Like kind of quickly talk about some books and then end the vlog. And I have rambled. But I hope you guys did enjoy this vlog. I just feel like I had the coziest couple of days with you guys just doing all of my favorite things. And I just always love hanging out with 
video. Feel free to let me know what you're currently reading in the comments below. I would love to know. And I should also have my wrap up video coming to you guys very soon. So you'll get to hear me talk about all the books that I end up finishing in May. I still have a couple days to finish what I'm currently reading. So hopefully I'll be able to finish Powerless and give you my final thoughts in my wrap up. But I love you guys so much. I hope you have a great day or night whenever you're watching this. And I will see you in my next video very soon. Goodbye.